the sweet hour of prayer. Good morning, brethren. Pray everyone as well. Shall we begin with the word of prayer and then we will get into the reading. Loving Father, which art in heaven, blessed be your name. Thank you again for another opportunity to study your word. Lord, as we open the pages, the desire pages, we ask that you may also open our hearts. Uh, we ask that your word may be a light unto our feet and uh, may be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you so much for each and every one of us who was able to tune in. Those who are still coming, please be with them. Thank you for this opportunity to study your word when we're not in hiding, when we still have these freedoms. Help us, Lord, to be transformed by your word. Thank you for all that you're going to do this morning. Forgive us, please, of our sin. When we hear these words, help us to be zealous, therefore, and to repent. Thank you for hearing our word. Our prayers this morning in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, yes, uh, we, uh, before we tend to our reading, I was wondering if uh, uh, anybody is happy to sing, want to make use of um, hymn number 136 in Christ and Song. Uh, when I remember Calvary, when I remember Calvary, um, let me share this song. I share this screen. Uh, does anybody know this song? Yes, we know it. Yeah, that's good. Would you like to take the first verse, uh, sisters? Uh, let me pull it out. Uh, it's in number 136. One thirty six, I see. Uh, sisters, if you can take the first verse, I will take the second. No one would like to take the last one. Can I take the second and then you can take the last one, please? Okay, sure. Uh, let's go in that order. Where he may lead me, I will go. For I have learned to trust him so. And I remember twas for me that he was slain on Calvary. Jesus shall lead me night and day. Jesus shall lead me all the way. He is the truest friend to me. For I remember Calvary. Oh, I delight in his command, love to be led by his dear hand. His divine will is sweet to me. Hallowed by blood stained Calvary, rejoicing room, holy one, born from the Sabbath, mum shabawa mi impela, mi kumbula e Calvary. Onward I go, no doubt, no fear. 
Happy with Christ, my Savior dear. Trusting that I someday shall see Jesus, my friend of Calvary. Jesus shall lead me night and day. Jesus shall lead me all the way. He is the truest friend to me. For I remember Calvary. Amen. Well, thank you, Brethren, uh, for that wonderful singing. Uh, allow me to share the reading now. Might as well just share the screen as we do the reading. Uh, and the suffrages, we are looking at chapter 52, The Last Journey from Galilee. Um, I think we had read to the heart of Jesus. It was false conception of the Messiah, so I could read that one. Yeah, and James and John, yes, I think this is the or oh, the only thing with sharing the screen I won't be able to highlight, but um, I'm sure you can see the yeah, DA4A6.3. Uh, we didn't get to read yesterday, but uh, that is the paragraph that we dwelt on. Right, um, the only trouble, um, this is maybe. Let me do it the, the normal way. I normally do it. It's easier so I can see the hands. All right. So any thoughts at all whilst I'm doing this? Um, any lingering thoughts from the discussions we had last, uh, yesterday? Um, I suppose... There could be some thoughts that came after the study and somebody was wanting to share. Um, we were looking at uh, mainly uh, the issue with the uh, uh, worship that was going on in Samaria and the worship that was going on in Jerusalem. Um, uh, we did out a bit on that paragraph because um, it appears that uh, the Samaritans uh, were jealous that uh, Jesus was endorsing the worship that was going on in Jerusalem and uh, uh, they seemed not to endorse what they were doing in Samaria. But we also uh, looked at uh, uh, the issue in depth, also comparing with our situation at the present time. Uh, Send messages before his face, yes. All right, I think this is where we are, 486.3. Uh, are there any thoughts at all from yesterday? I don't see any hands. Um, if there's no thoughts, we are going to move on, okay? It says, John and James... Christ messengers were greatly annoyed. Um, so if somebody can begin reading for us, please, uh, that paragraph. Got a hand up. <laughs> oh, there's a hand? No, me. <laughs> oh, yes, please go ahead. Um, yes, people can lose out a lot if they're prejudiced against other people. And this is what, they, they were losing out, you know, the Samaritans, um, it was bitter, you know, it says, um, 
you know, they was bitter against um, the Jews. And uh, Jesus was for everybody. But you, you, can't be an, you can't be an exclusive club, you know, wanting all the attention yourself. You know, you've got to, you've got to share everything. You know, and it makes you happy. But if you don't, if you've got the exclusive club, you want everything yourself, then you're miserable. You know, you're watching everything, see if anybody's getting more than you, which isn't a good, um, isn't good at you know, a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th there was some, um, there was, uh, uh, there was definitely some prejudice there. Um, against the Jews, the Samaritans against the Jews, and the Jews against the Samaritans. But in this case, um, the, I mean, what I think here is, uh, is, is detrimental, rather, the fact that the Samaritans, uh, they are so jealous to their own detriment you know, they, they're not receiving Jesus because um, he's going to Jerusalem. It's like uh, they know that this man stands for truth. This man is the truth. He is. Um, because at this point, uh, you could say, they had uh, enough evidence of who Christ was. But it's just jealous. Why is he not staying here? Why is he going to Jerusalem? So we're not going to let him pass through here. But uh, I wonder whether we sometimes get uh, uh, so jealous sometimes that uh, we close our hearts to Christ because of what he intends to do or what he is doing for others. We feel that, um, um, I don't know if you see what I'm saying here, yeah, but and I would rather close the doors to Christ because he is involved with the people in Jerusalem. Yeah, And also, um, that's what happened in heaven with Lucifer. Mm. Jesus of Christ and look, look what it's caused. Yeah. Jealous. Um yeah. Um uh, it, it's it's uh it's a sad thing indeed. Uh I see there's uh, two other hands there. Um is that sister Arlene and uh I suppose that should be Mother Kenzie. Yes, good morning. Um, thank good you. Morning. Um, you know, I was just little looking at this this paragraph. Little did they realize that they were turning from their doors the best gift of heaven. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we, we we see this in our everyday life. Every time you go out and and you give books and you you um you talk about God, you know, people are so prejudiced and they want to argue with you. They want to tell you that, you know, um, they about your God is not the right God. And, you know, it's, as you say, it is not us that um, they're turning away from. They're turning away from the true word of God, the true Christ, the one mm -hmm. who came into this world to die for us. They close their hearts on the truth. Yeah, mm. and you know, Jesus stand at the door and knock. Yeah, and he's not going to move until you know for for a long time. But how long? How do we know when he has moved? Because you still carry on the same way you carry on when the spirit of God, because you've hardened your heart for so long, the spirit of God will move on you, but you will never know that it's moved because. Mm of how hard in your heart is. So you'll still carry on the same way. And it's 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 not good to keep shutting the door, shutting the door on God. 
because right. you will be lost. You will be lost in this world of wilderness of woe. And you will not know how to get back because there is many people that says, I am lost. I am lost because of what they done or how they are with God. Thank you. Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, just to add to that, thank, thank you, Sister Allen, that, um, um, you know, there's little prejudices that, uh, you know, if we're not careful, Satan will take advantage. It, Satan doesn't care as long as we uh, uh, reject Christ, as long as Christ is not admitted. Uh, that's, that's the end goal. For some, some little prejudices, they would rather have the truth spoken by their favorite person or maybe the person who has their favorite accent, the person who comes from their culture. And um, if they don't seem to endorse the culture, even though you tell the tr telling the truth, some actually will close the door to that truth because, well, it doesn't seem to like my culture, so I'm not going to accept the truth. Well, uh, these other little things are not important. You know, sometimes we we can, uh, the devil can, can actually get in the way with those little things, you know. Oh, why did you not speak it this way? Why did you not dress this way? Oh, you know. But if you can identify the truth, truth has been spoken. Receive the truth and leave everything else uh, in the hands of Christ. Right. Uh, I think it's Mother Kezia. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you, Sun Desire. And uh, I agree with all those comments. Morning, everybody on the platform. I want to raise two points here. We see Jesus endorsing the worship um, in Jerusalem. And uh, saying to this woman at the well, this is not the true worship, right? You see, because these uh, Samaritans had been doing this for a long, 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 long time, and, you know, they, I think they, in their own uh, belief system, they were convinced that that is the way they should have. They never, they never wanted to go back and dig what happened that, you know, we ended up with uh, the two tribes um, worshipping in Jerusalem and, and all of us, you know, worshipping in these two other places which had been set up by Jeroboam. So tradition, it, sometimes, you know, if it's practiced for a long, long, long time, people tend to now think that it, it is the right way. They did not go back to, they did not go back to find out what is the problem. If they had they would have said, "Ah, uh -uh, Jeroboam was wrong. We should we should be worshiping in in Jerusalem." So mm. they did they didn't do that, and also because they were comfortable uh, in their old form of they they lost out on the Messiah as he is coming. Just like us in these days, you hear a lot of people now we living uh, the Adventist faith. Today, just to remind everyone, is October twenty two. Um, uh, Amen. And because it's October 22, we have this date, October, important date, October 22, 1844. A lot of people will hear them saying, how did they come to, how did they come to that date? They don't go back and bother to go and dig mm -hmm. to really find out. Um, and they 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 would just be prejudiced against to say that was just a date which they set up to say Jesus is coming. But if you go back into the scripture and, and if you go back of how they came to that, you, hmm. it's so accurate. And because of the prejudice that, ah, because uh, Christ did not turn up on that date. So yes. that's wrong. They just, uh, they, uh, they just took this date out of the thumb sack. They, they came up with this date, October 22, 1844. That is not true. You see, all these little prejudices, and then people starting to follow to say, yeah, yeah, 
without actually going deep into the study and finding out. These Samaritans were supposed to have found out how did we end up having a different place of worship. They didn't. They just continued in the in the old tradition and carried on. Just like even the other churches, they don't want to know how did the Seventh day Adventist came now. God was giving light to each and every movement until all the light was revealed in this church. So all the doctrine mm -hmm. coming from the from coming from right from Martin Luther, the reformers, all the progression of all the, the doctrines are all highlighted in the in the in the seven day Adventist. And he and that is the final, final movement, which God was now revealing the truth from the dark from the darkness. But people are not interested to study what happened. Why why was this this church set up? But mm. you know, all these little prejudices we need to. If there is anything which people are talking, go back and read and find out for yourself. Is this true? Because it's not it's not appropriate just to follow people, follow the crowd. Ah, oh, well, we've been worshiping at this mount, Mount Garrison or whatever. We have been doing this, you know. No, you cannot do that. We have scripture as our guideline. We have a spirit of prophecy as our guideline. Go back and search for yourself so that you are satisfied that what you are following is the truth. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been well said there. Uh, thank you, Mother, for those thoughts. Um, it, it's such an important issue, brethren, because I, I think it rightly fits where we are now because um, this issue of worship is, uh, uh, is, is the issue of the day. As you rightly said, I don't think uh, most of these, our brethren, who go to church on Sunday care to dig out how this whole thing of worshipping on Sunday came about. But because they're following the traditions of the fathers. Yeah, traditions of the fathers. It's amazing to actually draw similarities. There's actually interesting similarities between this the worship of the Samaritans and the Jews, uh, the, 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 the similarities are so striking. Now, if you remember well, the Samaritans, um, we, we did establish this yesterday, that uh, they were once worshipping, um, they once had the right worship when they, before the split, before the division they had the same worship system when all Judah, uh, I mean, when when uh, the, the, the nation was together during David's reign, during Solomon's reign, everything was fine. They had the right worship. Now, when Jeroboam came in, he then invented a way of worship that was not according to the scripture. Remember that he had to appoint his own priests. When God had said Levi, he had been set apart only to lead the worship. Jeroboam invented his own way of doing things. He appointed his priests because Levites would not take part in what he was doing in the northern part of the, the kingdom. It even went further when they went into captivity their worship was even more uh, mixed up with idolatry. I mean, they were already worshipping idols from the time of Jeroboam. But now, remember when the Jews came back from captivity during the time of Ezra, when they were rebuilding the temple? We did, uh, uh, went through this in the Prophets and Kings. Remember, there were those uh, uh, Israelites who wanted to take part in the rebuilding of the temple. And Nehemiah and Ezra were saying they were not going to have a part. They were not going to take part. They wanted to help. Now, some of the prejudice, some of the jealous came from there. In fact, if you read the chapter in the Zealot Ages on the woman at the well, uh, Sister White comments on this as well. Some of the jealous, the 
animosity and the hatred toward the Jews sprang from there because they were not given opportunity to take part in the building of the temple, uh, in the rebuilding of the temple. They decided to set up their own system. So they, they deliberately went to build their temple also. They said, we're going to build our own at Mount Gerizim. That's when, but that temple always kept uh, being an object of, um, of attack from their enemies. Until this time, we're now in the New Testament. They still continued anyhow to do their own thing. So, so you could um, you can almost see that this is so the similarities are so striking. Before the 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 dark ages, Sabbath. I mean, look at the old test, uh, the the New Testament church. There was no Sunday. It was until Constantine came into to the uh, to the equation who then shifted the sanctity from the Sabbath day, the seventh day, to Sunday. And these two days now, we're now going, at first they were going side by side, until eventually uh, the Sunday was lifted up higher, was exalted higher than the seventh day of the week. And of course, the Dark Ages came in and the Bibles were hidden from the people. Coming out of the Dark Ages, this light was still hidden. This is why most of our reformers were still keeping Sunday until you come to the last movement. So really, it's amazing to see how um, these two worship systems God has uh, the only worship that we saw yesterday in our discussion. It has to be in truth and in spirit. How do we identify the truth to the law and to the testimony? If they do not speak according to this word. But it's amazing that even though the word is so clear, remember the seventh day Sabbath to keep it holy. You hear ministers saying, oh, this law was nailed on the cross. But then they don't, they don't believe that uh, now we can commit adultery, we can steal. It's only one law that was nailed to the cross, really. Shockingly, it just shows you uh, how Satan would rather continue to keep this, uh, this the people uh, blind to the, to the truth. And Satan doesn't care. Uh, we can be we can be sincere, but if we the light has been revealed to us, we discussed this yesterday. If we continue in our sincerity of doing the wrong thing, then we have to give an account. Um, yes, I'll take out the ten and then we'll move on. I'll do yeah. ten. Yeah. Good morning. Um, there, there, there's what you call um, willful blindness where people just choose not to believe regardless of evidence because um, just like Jesus and the Pharisees Christ said to them look if you, if you doubt what I'm saying then go and search the scriptures mm -hmm. because the scriptures testify of me now as Adventists we can actually say the same thing because uh, take Daniel 9 um, for an example. There was a specific time period that was given for the Messiah to come. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Christ actually announced in the book of Mark that that time has been fulfilled, meaning that the Messiah is here. So if they were interested, they could have gone and studied and saw that. And there, were, there, there are Jews who actually place a curse upon those who read that, that passage of scripture. Oh, mercy. So that tells you that they have no intention to believe. Right. The same with the, with, with, um, the date that um, Sister Kaiser mentioned, 22nd of October, that there was a time period that was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You know, 
and you can just go back, trace it, and it takes you to October 22nd, 1844. You can't go around that. That's in the that's set in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just unfortunate that these people, you know, will rather follow their tradition instead of following what the scripture says. So we can actually find our identity in the scripture. And I believe that whatever we are doing today, you know, as believers, we need to make sure that it is in line with scripture. Because sometimes we also get caught up with the culture, with our culture that we were brought up in. And mm. you know, some people choose their culture over the word of God. And, you know, just to mention quickly as well, even within Adventism, we have these um, different, what would you call it? Um, um, uh, let me put it this way. We have the different churches. So you have like um, the Ghanaian church, you have um, different the Philippine church and so on, mm -hmm. you know, and when you really think about it, the idea was for us to come together as one, to be blended together because that mm -hmm. prayer that Jesus prayed in, in John chapter 17, where he says, let them be one. Yes. Even as the father and the son is one. That was this intention. So mm -hmm. when you have people separating to kind of preserve their culture, I can understand that I can if you're trying to you know be a step aside from the apostasy that is in the church that's a different thing mm. when you're trying to preserve your cultural identity oh, you know, I think there's gonna be <laughs> some kind of you know misrepresentation. It's not according to scripture elder. yeah it's not according to scripture yeah so the Adventist church is in the Bible. And, you know, whatever God intended for this church, that's what we need to, to, to demonstrate and reproduce so that it can stay in harmony with the scripture. Amen. 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 And this is the beauty, you know, God has blessed us. You see, here, uh, it, it's a blessing when you have uh, uh, different nationalities come together to study the word of God. This is what God would have us to do because uh, it's a miniature uh, uh, um, version of, of heaven, you know, um, diversity, but one in Christ. You know, um, just to pick on what you're saying there, some of these little prejudices that we give way and uh, we give way to uh, 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 the, they have to be dealt with. We have to confront them and in the name of the Lord overcome them because if we uh, make room for these little um, prejudices, they will cost us our salvation. Uh, may God help us that uh, we will not uh, give room to prejudice. We will love the truth and prize the truth about silver and gold. Um, yes, um, and Jesus represents the truth. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Let us not be like the Samaritans to be. It, it doesn't matter how sincere you are. If worship is not according to the truth, according to the, uh, Jesus said, the truth and the spirit, then that worship is not of God. Um, uh, Sister Charlie, Charlie, please go ahead. Good morning. Thank you. Um, yes, I was, just before you said that, uh, Elder Desire, I was thinking the same thing that, you know, we're almost, we're almost in heaven where all this will be gone. There will be no more prejudice, no more uh, jealousy, uh, and as and no more ugliness, no more people trying to to suppress other people. And I'm just sometimes and the, the things that are happening in the world, are they they don't they don't give me um, fear. They're giving me hope because I know that we're almost there. Mm -hmm. 
whilst these things are happening, the more I'm realizing that it's just a little while before we're home and we'll be, we'll be one. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. doesn't matter what language you speak. We'll all be the same. There won't be any sick. There won't be anybody looking down at you because they have more money or they've learned more or they won't be nice. there anymore. So we'll be all be sitting at one beautiful table with our master and we'll all be equal. And it's just, wow, it just gives me this thrill in my heart that thinking about that. And every time I, th and I get discouraged, I think, no, just hang in there, be mm -hmm. the world, be the kindness, be the one that I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm just saying I'm trying to be that person to to show the world this is the way it's supposed to be. And and um, you know, that's why we're supposed to be as Christians. And then and 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 put our arms around those that are struggling, those that are struggling and maybe leaving the faith that they, they can come into the, the fold and we can all be in heaven one day. So that's I just had this beautiful hope in my heart lately that, you know, it's it's just a little while and we'll be there and we'll there won't be all of, all of this stuff, the jealousy. It'll all be gone, and um, mm. yeah, but never to be, never, never to to happen again. So that's just something we can hope for, and something we can have have joy in. And, um, yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I I share in that uh, uh, in that uh, uh, thought. I think it's beautiful to imagine what heaven is going to be like, um, and you know. Yes, we shall be translated and we shall put on glorious bodies, but we'll still carry our individuality, our uh, um, diversity. Um, we don't know how it's going to look like, but this is how God is intended. Y you know, you, you can't try and 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 invent your own way and this is how you also how we should identify god's true church god's true church has to be made up of all kindreds tongues people nations when you see the everlasting gospel is being preached to 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 all classes of people to all kindred. Now, the word nation there uh, comes from the Greek word ethnos, which means ethnicities. So, um, if you're trying to set up a church that only has uh, Zimbabweans or South Africans, uh, I mean, I don't know how you read a Revelation chapter 14. Um, because Revelation chapter 14, which is the, the mission uh, of this church, the first, the second, and the third angel's message, I mean, how do you pre preach to one people and still claim that you're preaching the everlasting gospel? It, it, it's, it's absurd. Um, but anyway, let's, let's, let's move on. James and John, if we can get somebody to read for us, please. <laughs> James and John, Christ's messengers, were gently and greatly. greatly annoyed at the insult shown to their Lord. They were filled with indignation because he had been so rudely treated by the Samaritans, whom he was honouring by his presence. They had recently been with him on the Mount of Transfiguration and had seen him glorified by God and honoured by Moses and Elijah. This mac mac manifest dishonour on the part of the Samaritans should not they have thought be passed over without marking, without marked punishment. Uh, Sister um, Alan, you can read the next paragraph as well, please. Coming to Christ, they reported to him the words of the people telling him that they had even refused to give him a night's lodging. They thought that grievous that a grievous wrong had been done him, and seeing Mount Carmel in the distance, where Elijah had slain the false prophets, they said, Wilt thou that we consume command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? They were surprised to see that Jesus was pained by their words, and still more surprised as this rebuke fell upon their ears. Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of, 
for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And he went to another village. Mm. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's pause. Let's ponder on those two paragraphs. Uh, thank you, Sister Linda and Sister Alan, for the reading. Um, any thoughts? These, these are the messengers of Christ now. They're not happy um, the disciples of Christ, especially John and James. It's interesting that uh, they're the two highlighted in this, in this case were greatly annoyed at the insult shown to the Lord and were filled with indignation because he had been so rudely treated by the Samaritans whom he was honoring by his presence. How do we make of this? Yes. Um, uh, Tak, please uh, go first and then uh, I believe his mother Ketia goes next. Yes, they want to revenge. They didn't, they didn't understand God's mission, the cross mission that he'd come to save the Samaritans. Not, not to, um, you know, they, they, they just want to revenge because the, 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 yeah, because of the prejudices and everything. Instead of, mm. you know, um, wanted to teach them, they wanted revenge, you know, bring fire down and kill them, you know. And cross wasn't like that. <laughs> That's a turn. <laughs> Uh, mercy. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sisters. Yeah, Mother Kesha, please go ahead. This is a sad reality. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can see the love of God. God leads his people step by step. He is so for is full of forbearance, full of uh, long suffering, not willing that any should perish. So mm -hmm. when he is saying this Jesus is demonstrating the pain of, you know, the impatience which these two disciples had and the spirit within them that they should be killed because they are wrong. Yet God wants, you know, he gives us chance after chance after chance, you know, the kingdom of his grace to repent. He wanted mm. Samaritans to repent, to know who Christ is by destroying them. That is the spirit of the enemy who came to steal, to, uh, to steal, to destroy, and to kill. And mm -hmm. that is not the spirit what God wants. And when you parallel it, like what is happening now in the church, you know, Sometimes, you know, those words which are being said, which are just being passed around by our leadership, they are so hurting, you know. And yes, there is righteous indignation, right? You are, you, you are saying, what's wrong with this person? Instead of we are being taught here that we should be praying for them, agonizing, sighing and crying for our leadership. Not to say, you know, to say, look at him, he's, he's, he's a bigot and he's a what, you know, like we hear now, you know, insults being thrown. That's not Christian character. When we mm. hear these things which are against our Lord and Savior, yes, we should be looking at it with, with much pain and saying, Lord, please help our brother because the enemy is behind this. If we don't have the picture of the great controversy behind anything, then it's so easy to hate people. Yeah. It's so easy to, but when you think about it, that the enemy is captive, is taken captive of the mind, and the, these people are just being used, or whether they've just been, you know, Christ, you can see Christ was at pains with Judas. He was with him. For all that period, twelve and uh, sorry, uh, three and a half years, but he did not change. And mm. when even when he was washing his feet, he still had compassion over him, giving him a chance to repent. Yet he had money in his pocket. He was so sure that he's, this this is not what he wanted out of the Messiah. He, mm. And he was ready now to, to, he had already betrayed him. 
you know. So we can see that the spirit of God is not like that. There is always, you know, forbearance, long suffering, giving chance after chance until that chance is is taken out. You you know, your probation is closed. So mm. Christ is demonstrating that love. Thank you. Very interesting. When I was reading that, I was also thinking of uh, how we react. You, you know, we, we've been talking about um, uh, the Samaritans. Uh, in this case, we we say the other churches, yeah. Samaritans, we can liken them to the fallen churches or to the Protestant, uh, to the uh, false prophet, rather. Yeah. Um, other churches, you can say, uh, that are uh, all other religions. Yeah, let's just put all of them, uh, other religions, in that category of the Samaritans. Um, now, how do we react when we are doing evangelism? Uh, some of us, I know we do literature distribution we we go into the streets we do literature evangelism maybe we we knock on those doors or maybe we have conversations with uh, uh or bible studies with these uh brethren that are from other churches or maybe we interact with them online and you hear the insult that they the insults that they make, maybe to the uh, servant of the Lord, Sister White, a maid servant, um, the insult that they they uh, uh, they make against the truth, against the Sabbath. How do we feel? Do we feel justified if we're angry? And we post those harsh comments. Maybe it's online. Um, I, 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 I was trying to put myself in that uh, situation. Um, I know some of us don't take it easy when you're insulted in the streets. You, you, you feel that uh, your indignation is justified to. Uh, I've seen some 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 clips where uh, people actually uh, feel vindicated to lay hands on them. Uh, that's obviously another extent. But um, how do we feel? Uh, recently, I know there's been some 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 popular podcasters have been. Uh, 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 well, alleging that uh, the Seventh Day Adventist Church is not even a denomination; it's not a, um, it's rather an all, uh, it's an, it's an all cult. What do they call it? It, it should be classed as an all cult uh, organization, and they say all sort of things about the. I mean, what is your reaction to that? Uh, in this case, um, James and John, Christ's messengers, were greatly annoyed. And some will even take it to the pulpit to also make presentations and show our annoyance and how aggrieved we are. But Christ is saying here, uh, you don't know the spirit that uh, is influencing you to do that. Um, he says that they were surprised to see that Jesus was pained by their words and still more surprised as his rebuke fell upon their ears. Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. So destroying can be done by words. The words that you're going to say to that person who is still blinded from the truth 
can destroy them or they can be even more uh, closed towards the truth. Um, so the way we respond, the way we react will show what man or spirit is influencing us. I don't see any other hands, um, but I'm sure we can uh, resonate with uh, those situations. All right, if uh, it's 23 past, I think we can still read uh, one more paragraph if there's no hands. Um, can somebody else read for us, please, uh, the next paragraph? It is not part of Christ's mission to compel men. It is not part of Christ's mission to compel men to receive him. It is Satan and men actuated by his spirit that seek to compel the conscience. Under a pretense of zeal for righteousness, men who are confederate with evil angels bring suffering upon their fellow men in order to convert them to their ideas of religion. But Christ is ever showing mercy ever seeking to win by the revealing of his love. He can admit no rival in the soul, nor accept of partial service, but he desires only voluntary service, the willing surrender of the heart under the constraint of love. There can be no more conclusive evidence that we possess the spirit of Satan than the disposition to hurt and destroy those who do not appreciate our work or who act contrary to our ideas. Wow, that is so beautiful. Thank you, Sister Judith, for that uh, uh, wonderful reading, brethren. I don't know if uh, uh, you are receiving the counsel as uh, well as I'm receiving the counsel here. This is powerful. It is no part of Christ's mission to compel men to receive him. I have uh, the thought that came to my mind is when we try to uh, uh, when we when we get angry and we respond uh, or we feel annoyed and we want to react or respond in a certain way that will really uh, that will make them really feel how wrong they are we are actually descending down to their level it, 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 this is the thought that's coming to my mind by doing that you're actually lowering yourself i don't know if i'm saying this uh the right way but, but we have such a high standard we have such a high standard that God has called us to reach. The, the, the fact that we, we have the truth. We don't say this with pride, but with humility. You know, this is the, this is the, the truth. Um, but you see, the world out there is in darkness. God has taken us out of darkness into this marvelous light. This is marvelous light. So now, to try and argue with somebody who can't see, we are actually losing our mind. These people need more love because we have to appreciate that their eyes are still closed. Um, so uh, to, to really show annoyance and is descending, uh, it, it's, it's low level. Anyway, uh, I think there's there's two two ends there. Have uh, 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 Tarkley's and then um, uh, Elder Ten. Yes, just a quick one. A lot of people are in prison because they couldn't control their anger. You know, you've got to be able to control it. Um, mm. when it's, Rule your spirit. When it's done something wrong at you, you know. Yeah, it's sad. Mm. Act in the Bible in Proverbs, it says, A man that has control over his spirit is, a, is better than the man who taketh the city. 
There's a strong text in Proverbs. Uh, I can't remember where it's found. Yes, um, we need to show the character of God. God is love, and love suffers or beareth all things, endures all things, hopeth all things. This is the love that God wants us to have when we're dealing with this, this folk. Um, the ten, please go ahead. And and many of the attacks that we get from um some of these ministers is actually coming from a spirit of jealousy. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes we have to be aware of that because it's the same thing that happened with Christ. You know, he was, Jesus was part, it was said that he was possessed by a, by the prince of the demons. You know, and the Pharisees, they knew that they, they were envious of him. They mm -hmm. knew that they were jealous because his movement was the fastest growing movement at the time. And he, even though there is apostasy in the Seventh-day Adventist church, the fastest growing church is the Adventist church. And who knows, maybe we have taken some of their members. Mm -hmm. You know, So there's an attack to put the church in a bad light so that people will not join the church. But as I said before, you know, we can we can we can use reasoning instead of using passion and anger. Just like Jesus. Jesus responded by using reasoning. Can Satan cast out Satan? And how silly did they look when the people listen to state statements like that? They must have looked silly. Because how can you have Satan casting out Satan? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have to just think, you know, and try to respond with, with reasoning so that people can listen and make their own decision whether what they're saying is true or not. So, you know, I believe that most of it is coming from a spirit of jealousy and envy. Thank you. Yes. Um... And we know who possesses those attributes. And um, yes, so 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 if we are to react, we have to show uh, that we 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 have uh, the right spirit, you know. Um, and I, I would add to that and say we need to. You know, the Bible says we need to be able to give an answer to those, uh, be ready always to give an answer to those who ask uh, the reason of the faith or the hope that is within us with meekness and trembling. Um, and, but we're also told the Spirit is going to put in that same mouth the words in our mouth. If we uh, study God's word, prayerfully ask, God to give us the wisdom in answering these charges before we rush to text or to respond. Some of the some of the comments or some of the attacks, we just need to ignore them. We don't have to respond to everything. By the way, um, uh, you know, somebody said, uh, if if if. Um, uh, uh, time is gone, but it's an illustration that uh, somebody has always. Uh, I will say it in my in my in my in my language, but I'll try to translate it. That if if somebody who is mental health, uh, uh, or do you call them people, you know, uh, and they they they. You, you know, back, 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 back in a back at home, people can wash in the river. Some sometimes, you know, and uh, if a mad person come and uh, steal your clothes whilst you're having a wash, um, if you are in your right mind, you don't go after them, chasing them, because people think now you have two mad people. Uh, because they are going to actually enjoy that chase and they're going to run straight into the village and you go after them, people think now there's two. But 
if you let them and uh, maybe call somebody to bring another pair of clothes for you. That would be the wisest thing you can do. So we have, we don't have to respond to everything, to all these attacks. Even when we're in the street, um, oh, you follow that woman, you worship that woman, you know, they say, you're an occult. We don't have to respond to everything. But those who sincerely want to know the truth, let's ask that God may give us wisdom to direct them to the scripture and give them an answer of the hope that is within us. I will close here. Uh, I think this, I will indulge you, Mother, and then can you please pray for us afterwards? Okay, thank you. You know, it's um, it's interesting that we are being told here that that spirit is not the spirit of God. And this is what is going to happen in the end, isn't it? We are being compelled to worship on Sunday. And for those of us who know that compilation, that, that definitely the spirit of Satan will be so, um, you know, so clear to everyone that how can you be forcing people to go and worship at a certain date, at a certain day, if they don't want to? Because they will be really believing that all the calamities are happening because of this sect. And they'll start compelling people to go and worship on Sunday. Mm. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we want to thank you so much this morning for allowing us to have this time to study, to see that, Lord, the spirit which governs us most of the time, Lord, is not your spirit. When we compel people to do certain things, or, oh, Lord, when we look at others, and start judging them. It is not your spirit. We are praying, Lord, that we, you give us a spirit of repentance. Give us the mind of Christ, Lord, so that we can look at people the way you look at them, with love and compassion. As we leave this platform, Lord, may your words settle in our hearts that we, each time we come back to you, and say, Lord, what will he have me to do for you mm -hmm. for, with love? Lord, you compelled us with your love at Calvary. We have no doubt that we, you love us so much. May we remember that, that that love, Lord, needs to go to all the other people as well. Thank you for each and every one of us and the, our families represented by us here on this platform is we learn as the Holy Spirit is teaching us, Lord, we pray that you give us, um, you bless us with the spirit of repentance. Lord, thank you for Son Desire who has been uh, taking, leading this um, reading this morning, Lord. Continue to bless his ministry. And each one of us, Lord, as we leave this platform, may we continue to meditate and to talk to you continuously, Lord, as Enoch used to do, so that, Lord, we will not depart from your presence. Bless the work of our hands, Lord. Bless each one of us in here and our families, our children and everyone, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, brethren. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Our programs will go as always. We have midday prayers from 12 to 1. And in the evening, we have uh, Pastor Jackson this week. Please do join if you're available. And uh, let's also send invitations to our friends and our families. God bless you. Uh, prayer retreat from the 23rd to the 29th. Uh, let's make plans and let's keep praying for this event and pray for our speakers as well that uh, everything may go according to plan. And uh, remember your donations. Uh, 
suppose uh, uh, Sister V and Brother JB are on, I think it would be good to update uh, people where we are once in a while um, financially so people know how we're doing and how much we need uh, to uh, uh, cover the expenses that uh, we need to cover. May God bless you, brethren. Have a wonderful day. Amen.